Okay. I say a word, you respond. Okay. First, first thing pops your mind. All right. Pride. Hell. Fall. <laughs> oh, okay. I just thought about judgment. <laughs> Drag. Satan. Pride through the ground and kill it. <laughs> Gay. I'm very happy. Idaho. You're <laughs> very happy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get there. You'll understand. Hey, welcome to Cross Politics. It is, it's Thursday <laughs> evening, and it's good to be with I'm you. I'm just thankful we didn't start, start the show yelling at us this time. I know. I was waiting for it. I was it's waiting. Like, like, it's, it's like the first time this <laughs> week. Blow my like, eardrums. I just want to ask you guys some questions. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Oh, well, He's good evening <laughs> Brian to you, Brian all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just have a conversation. No, one, no one's ever like compared me to Brian McLaren. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's first time for everything. Welcome to Cross Politics, Pastor Toby, Chuck Knox. I'm the Water Boy. It's good to be with you. We also have. Uh, a candidate, Paul pa- Thompson, pastor. coming up. Pastor, yeah. Get Paul Thompson right. coming up on the second uh, uh, segment, so stick around for that. Reformation Heritage Books is a publisher and bookseller whose mission is to equip the saints to serve Christ and his church through biblical, experiential, and practical resources. RHB's reading material. Oh, Reformation. What does it stand for again? I already, lost, already forgot it. Reformation Heritage Books. <laughs> Acronyms. He did that just so he could say it a couple LGBT's times LGBT's yeah. reading Whoa. material. No! So, RHB's reading material is God glorifying in accord with scriptures mm. and historic reformed creeds for the promotion and defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Each mm. book they publish and sell, whether from the Puritans or modern day authors, subscribes to the three forms of unity, which is the Belgian Confession, the Heidelberg Catechism, the Canons of Dort, and the Westminster Standards. Back. Find out more at heritagebooks.org. And they sent me some books. I'm so grateful. They sent me some books. I enjoy them. Also, also yes. some books. Yes. I've already yeah. been using their devotional that they sent. I have to. Yeah. Yeah. That, that commentary on the whole Bible. Did you see that? Like that family devotion? Yeah. Like oh, a, yeah, 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 yeah. On every chapter of the Bible. Yeah. It's like a little devotional. Yeah, one one little paragraph family, per, per chapter. Family, Bible yeah. Yep. thing. I, yeah, I've been, I've been reading it. Heritagebooks.org. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so on Wednesday, Oof. I uh, was alerted of... Uh, so on Sunday, we're actually having a Boise Gay Pride Festival. We are not. We no. are not. Idaho is. <laughs> okay. Boise is. Ah. And that was uh, and on Wednesday. <laughs> I was alerted to I it. I can hear all I, the Baptists right now. It sounds so Presbyterian. That's funny. That's funny, Knox. You done messed up, Aaron. <laughs> and uh, so I found out about it on Wednesday. Oh. I sent out an email um, I have a political email list. Yeah. Um, I sent out a political email, and then I texted it to uh, the president of Zion's Bank locally. Mm-hmm. Zion's Bank uh, is one of the sponsors for the Gay Pride Festival. Uh, he sent that. He asked for me to for permission to send that email on, and then along with my name and yeah. contact info, so it was a legitimate response to them, a legitimate complaint to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then about an hour later, he texted me back uh, with the Zion statement that was going to be released later. Oh, oh. Um, so you got firsthand so experience of everything. That's going hand, on. Yeah, so it, it kind and, of, and Zion's pulled out. And Zion's did. pulled out. Here's their statement: Over yep. the years, Zion's Bank has supported a variety of pride events. Oh. Which you shouldn't have done because they are an important part of our support for our LGBTQ. What about plus employees and allies and our representative of our efforts to foster an inclusive, diverse, and equitable workplace? Ah. Yeah. This support for all our employees and communities remains unchanged. However, when we committed to our sponsorship of this year's Boise Pride event, we were unaware of the event's activities involving children or minors. Since learning of these specific activities, we have made the decision to withdraw <laughs> our participation in this year's Boise Pride event and have communicated this to the event organizers. That's, that's what it was. It was, it was the kids. It was the kids. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the uh, sodomy. Was like, it was kids. Oh, yeah. all right. It was kids there? Oh, well, in that case. So, if, But if you look at all <sighs> Well, the good job for pulling it. I'm going to yeah. tell you. Yeah, I know. If you look at all the literature and marketing materials coming out from the, the, the Pride Festival, I mean, yeah. it, they are exactly targeting kids. They do yeah. have events specifically related to the kids. Yeah. They've got drag kids on stage. Drag kids. The, the, yeah. the oh. front of the brochure is uh, made of cartoon uh, uh, action figures. Right. That's right. the front of the yeah, brochure. Like, like, like superheroes. So, huh. hey, kids, kind this like is going to be a fun event. Pervert like, trying to get kids to come yeah. in. You want yeah. some candy? Here's some candy. Yeah. Some cartoons? Yeah. Okay. Now, look at It's on Sunday. Yeah. So the, it's basically they've created a worship service on Sunday. Okay, at eleven forty-five, it's it's a drag time story hour. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're actually going to remember nine eleven, which is remember that's their form of prayer. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah you know whatever. That. And oh then you got goodness. praise and worship with lesbi kings uh, there at the bottom. And they're and, speaking and, and, in tongues too. Lesbi Studio. And then what did you say? I'm just trying to. And then at twelve forty-five, you got the drag kids event. Now this is what's really important about the drag kids event. It is not going to be, from what I understand from reading, um, 
people who are doing drag for kids. This is actually kids, kids. from 8 11, to 11. 11, 11 to 18. Uh, 11 to 18, 11 18. thank you. 11, what, who knows what the age is really on. 11 I mean, to 18, they identify 11 to 18. They could. They yeah. li- right, right. 11 to 18, there's going to be kids doing drag right, right. for kids and right. everybody else right. between that time of right. 8, uh, yeah. between that time of the age groups of 11 to 18. So, so this so, is happening right. in Idaho, and I, I'm, I'm having a hard time. Oh, and basically, what what I see happening in this is happening in Idaho, happening in Boise, it also happened in Coeur d'Alene, uh, which was made people made us think about it in Coeur d'Alene a couple of weeks yep. ago, um, June eighth or something like that. I think it but was. We're such a conservative state, and I'm like, why is this happening in Idaho? Right, and on nine eleven. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. But I mean, that, I mean, that's, I mean, talk about raising a middle finger to God, in in, in right. a lot of ways, and America, in America. And, and then, but I also just don't see like an immune system much from Idaho on no, this. No. Well, we're in trouble. Well, this, I mean, go ahead, Pastor. Go, go back to the, the Zions Bank thing. We, like, um, I'm really thankful that they're pulling. I know, yeah. Um, Idaho Power also took their name off. Okay. Um, but I don't think, I, mean, I shared the statement on Twitter and I said, I don't think Zions Bank knew they were selling their soul when they started supporting Pride events. Yeah. The backlash is going to be intense from the Pride and people. And it has been. Um, I said, pray for backbone and eyes to open to see the b- mm-hmm. black pit they've been supporting. Um, but I, I think that I mean I'm, I'll lay this. I'm. I think we've failed in the church in particular. Yeah. Um, to disciple the nation and teach them that th- there is a, there is a slippery slope here, and there are no brakes on this car. That's right. Yeah. You cannot say okay, it's okay for adults to commit adultery. It's okay for consenting adults to fornicate. It's yep. okay for consenting adults to uh, divorce their spouses That's right. for no reason. You can't That's right. you can't reject God's law at those levels and it not. That's right. And like this is what happens. Yeah. You 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 um you you give your you, the finger to God yeah. on heterosexual sins. That's right. And you get homosexual sins and you get um pederasty. That's right. You, you yeah. get these things all the way down. I mean, we this, need to make the slippery slope great again. I mean this this, this is I mean <laughs> I mean it's like this is in the law of God. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the law of God it's like look, you need to stay married and be faithful to your wife. And yep. no, that means you you can't sleep with your mother-in-law and That's you can't right. sleep with your sister and your aunt yep. and no and you can't do it Two, two women, two men. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, we and like, we're everybody's like, act like they're, pro, they're prudes about, you know, Leviticus. They're like, really, Moses, did you have to go into all that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. This is why he did. And right. you, you, like, this is, this is the answer right here because th- this, you, you can't say, I will give into my lust mm-hmm. and then say, but it will only go so far. Yeah. No, right. lust simply wants what it wants, it has no breaks. Yep. And it always wants more. And that's and that's it why I, I think more. the point being, those like Zion's Bank and anyone else who thought it was a good idea to support the pride yep. uh, perversion, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, like you were already setting them up. I mean, why? On what basis are you going to say they, they have to stop? That they cannot um, uh, groom mm-hmm. children yeah. to think about doing this too. Yeah. When when Zion's backed out, we started to do a, a bunch of research trying to figure out like how are they getting funded? Like what's what's yeah. the financial yeah. keys yeah. that's that's funding this? Mm-hmm. And it was surprising because um thank God for Heather Scott. That woman, she has done such a great she, job she's on one of particular our state senators, uh, uh, legislators. Legislators, uh, legislators. Yeah. yeah, she's done a From great job done digging on on this and yep. so uh, if you want to find her on Twitter, Facebook, you can find some of this information, but she found out that over $100,000 from Idaho Department of Health and welfare, welfare was spent in support of gay pride. I mean, first of in all, a, just, in, a, in just twenty twenty one alone. Just stop there. Wait and just say health and welfare. Yeah. Okay. I mean, see, th- yeah. I mean, this is this is like health and welfare giving hundreds of thousands of dollars for like cigarettes and cocaine. Well, here's what's crazy. So, n- not to mention that I think That's over right. 75, 80 percent of our money that comes into the health and welfare department is federal. Yeah. So it's got twenty percent is probably our yeah. local state taxes. But here's what's crazy: the Department of Health and Welfare, their primary role in the community is to provide services and oversight to promote healthy people, safe children, and stable families. Yeah, and monkeypox. Um. <sighs> And HIV. Supposedly the way that they do this <laughs> is through uh, special uh, supplements and nutrition assistance like food stamps and Medicaid. That, that makes sense. Although I don't like it. Right. Providing direct care services for certain uh, disadvantaged and underdeserved uh, populations. Okay. Protecting children and vulnerable adults. Right. I said, we <laughs> probably should get a dictionary and look up what people talk about, right. you know, vulnerable. protecting. Because I'm sure protecting to a right. pervert means something different. Right. right. So maybe they need to look right. up that word. Underrepresented you know? people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, right. like, well, like, mops, like mops. Like mops. Mine are attracted. They're yeah. supposed to be promoting healthy lifestyles. 
Yeah. Uh, monkey pox, yeah. anybody. The homosexual right. lifestyle by itself is a very unhealthy lifestyle. That's I don't right. even know why they're supporting right. that. Right. Identifying and reducing public health risk. Right. So you got monkey pox. That's a pandemic right now. Yeah. Everybody knows it yeah. is. And you send children yeah. and yeah. more people into this environment right. to Here. potentially. And, and the White House is sending yeah. a, a 900 vials of uh, vaccine for the monkey pox for this event to Idaho. Right. So yeah. here's what's crazy about this. As I was looking up, I was like, okay, so who's the leadership? Well, the <laughs> Department of Health and Welfare is directly under the leadership of Idaho Governor Brad Little. Mm. The board consists of seven voting mm. members appointed by the governor as well as a chairman of House and the Senate Health and Welfare Legislative Committee. Yeah, we need their names. So, well, here you go. There goes their names right there on the back. I want to know yeah, their names. Yeah, so here, why are you, why are you going Juliet through? Juliet Sharon, Ross Edmonds, Elke Shaw Tulloch, Cameron Gilliland, Shane Leach, Brad McDonald, Tamara Prisick, Chuck Weber. We need to talk to you people. I would love to talk to them. That would be interesting. I would love to talk yeah. to them. There is a, they, I think, thank God for Heather Scott again. She came up with a list of, there it goes, it's on the back screen there. That list right there. They've been doing this since 2016, mm. and they've been ramping it up more and more every year. Yeah. Here's something that you said, Pastor. You said it's the churches. Church is failing at this. We have failed to put the right type of watchdogs in place as well. Right. We have this, like you said, this is a Republican state, right? And we have Republican people in yeah. the leadership, and the people that are in the position of leadership have capitulated even right. themselves. I'm like, oh, are you not watching the right. money and what right. it's spent on? Are you not saying, hey, right. listen, we don't support this. This is not the type of state that we want in in right. in in. Uh, in these are not the type of things we want in our state. Right. Where's the moral, ethical values that come from being a Republican? That's not even there. Yeah. No. And that means that the pe- the values of, we've look, I didn't even know up until now that Zion Bank was Mormon. But no, I knew that part. But, <laughs> but was in, but was funding this? Yeah. yeah. I had no yeah. idea up until right. now. Yeah, right. yeah. They've, and, yeah, they've been funding the Pride Festival every right, year. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. It, and it took the fact that oh, the kids were going to be there. Right. That, right. that their audience like oh, our audience won't like that. Yeah. Well, where's your own moral? Right. The pr- but, uh, ethical part, part, yeah, but part of the issue though is is that there's way I don't think I don't think we're we're, con- we're truly conservative. We're we're more libertarian than we are conservative. Here in Idaho. In, the other, well, and to your point, Toby, um, about the the God's law, the concern for God's law. I, I just read an article today where Singapore um, uh, they just decriminalized gay sex while pl- pledging to add constitutional amendment to protect the definition of marriage between one man and one woman. Right. That's where it started. Yeah. And that's where it started in the U.S. Right. We decriminalized. Right. And 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 the and the, notice the deal they made. Yep. We're going to affirm that it's man and woman. Yep. No, you just you just cut that branch yep. off yep. the tree. Yep. Give it and, give it twenty years. That's right. Here you are. No, you're dead. You know, I, I want to say this too, real quickly. We have to understand this is the bigger plan and play in all of this is to remove beauty. Mm-hmm. What these guys are doing are dressing up like women, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they're, there's blackface for women. So right. they're destroying yep. the what right. is the crowning glory right. of man. Right. Uh-huh. That's beauty. What does beauty do for a man? It gives him courage. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Why do you think they want to destroy beauty? To destroy man from having courage to fight and engage That's these right. things. Mm-hmm. They are going through the back door to cut off the knees of man. After men doesn't see beauty anymore and you don't know what a woman is, then right. the man that says, hey, man, I would love to, this happened in Atlanta to some of my friends. They wanted to step up to a lady, but they've been hit too many times with the fact that that actually wasn't a lady. Oh, man. Ooh. All oh. of a sudden. Are you serious? It wasn't a lady. He had to find out the hard way. And no. he was sitting up there like, ooh. And all of a sudden it made him say, eh, I'm not willing to step up. We're going to have to. I need to know your mom. It changes the whole dynamics of things. But the whole point at the end of the day with all this is to remove courage from man by doing it like this, publicly um, putting to death what is beautiful. Yeah. And right. we can't, we cannot stand for this in any kind of nope. way. Paul Get Thompson, it out of Idaho. We're going to talk to him about this and much, much more. Pastor Paul Thompson next on Cross Politics. where Dave and I plan this year's company holidays. Let's go through the list. Easter, too religious. St. Patrick's Day? Too white. Mother's Day? Way too cisgendered. All of your usual holidays have been canceled this year. But we still have Karl Marx's birthday! Ha <laughs> ha! Need a real reason to party? Find a new job at redballoon.work. Home. It's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? 
Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy. Welcome back to Cross Politic on the Fight Laugh Feast Network. Who writes these ads? Why do I have. Do you like Please Jesus don't. and beer? I don't even like that ad. <laughs> I, I love this ad. This is, what, this is my favorite one. This um, is the one I gave to Babylon B to, to read for yeah, us. So. Yeah. Then you, then you and your family need to come to Fight Laugh Feast Conference because nothing says family like Jesus and beer. <laughs> It's going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee, October 6th through the 8th. The topic of the conference is lies, propaganda, storytelling, and the serrated edge. Swing. Satan is the father of lies, and the mother of those lies is a government that has rejected God. Christians haven't been reading their Bibles, so we as a society are more susceptible than ever to Satan and his lies. So Idaho. Jo- join us October 6th through the 8th as we fight, laugh, and feast with beer and psalms and you don't have to drink the beer if you don't want to. You just sing songs with us. have Kool-Aid. Our, our amazing lineup of speakers, including Pastor Doug Wilson, uh, George Gilder, President Ben Merkel of New St. Andrews College. I'll be there. Uh, Chocolate Knox is going to be doing a roundtable yeah. on storytelling. And, imagination, And, the, and yeah. the power of stories in cultivating uh, the right kind of Christian imagination. Kind of the opposite of what this uh, this Pride Festival Absolutely. is doing. They're, they're, they, they understand discipleship. They do. You know, superheroes and getting kids to dress up and, and pretend <laughs> that, you know, uh, you know transgenderism is uh, some kind of superhero um, power, superpower. Anyways, mm. um, we've got real stuff for the kids at our conference, like jumpy castles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's what we do. <laughs> so uh, sign up to attend with you and yours. Strong, strong. Become a vendor at fightlaughfeast.com. Hope to see you there. We are very grateful to have with us um, on the line right now, mm-hmm. Pastor Paul Thompson. Pastor Paul, personal friend of mine. He's a pastor of Eastside Baptist Church down in uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. Uh, he uh, he was what uh, what's moving June twenty June two thousand one he became the pastor down there and his wife wow. uh, Renee were married in nineteen eighty six uh, they have two sons and uh, three grandchildren is that right look at that yeah we have we have three uh, on the ground and one in one in the womb hey, all right hey. I, I, all them kids are baptized too ain't they. <laughs> I mean, we have we love our covenant theology in in our Baptist church. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's are like a politician. Pastor Paul is currently running for Idaho Senate in District Twenty Five, which is down near Twin Falls, Idaho. Mm. Um, yeah. So, uh, Pastor Paul, thanks for joining us on Cross Politic again. Yeah, listen, guys, it's, it's thanks for having me back, and it's always good to see you guys. Absolutely. So, Paul, how did how did conservative, I mean, red state conservative Idaho get to the point where we have drag queen and pride events grooming children out in public parks funded by hundreds of thousands of tax dollars? Yeah, the, the, it really is a great shame. And I'm, I'm sure that Anyone listening right now, or at least in the, Ida- the state of Idaho, will will know that in Idaho, our taxpayers, our taxpayer dollars, are helping fund uh, most of these uh, gay pride events yep. that are happening. My, my city included in Twin Falls, Idaho, for the last five or six years, uh, Idaho Health and Welfare has been dumping tens of thousands of dollars to help promote um, pride events in my city, and just like in uh, Boise right now. And I'm sure up up in North Idaho as well. And really, you know, how how do we get here? Uh, there's probably lots to evaluate through this, mm. but I, I I think largely we have a sleepy little church that uh, knows better and and sits back in our churches thinking, what can we do? We we you know we got to do something, and and quite frankly, rarely do anything about it. And so I I really think, as you guys have noted in the past, th- these things largely sit upon the church people and the God-fearing people who love God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their might, with all their strength, and have just really been living a couple of generations of not witnessing people stand up and speak into our culture, speak into our government. Mm. So yeah. so then what would you—I mean, you're a pastor. I mean, you're seeing the things that are going on right now. Um, 
I guess it's, I, I'm going to ask you why you're running, because I, but I guess it's obvious. What do you do with your congregation when you see something like this? Yeah, you know, here at uh, Eastside Baptist Church, uh, I, I've, I, uh, I'm, um, I attend our city council meetings every week, uh, with a few exceptions when I'm out of town or have some kind of a conflict, but I, I keep my eyes wide open and, uh, I'm, I'm very vocal to let my church, Hey, listen, you need to, you need to contact your city council. Uh, here's something that they're talking about. Here's something they plan to do. Um, and, and as well, I've, I've enjoyed some levels of, of ability to communicate to my, uh, larger community until about the last year and a half. I've, written a regular column in our newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, I, I serve as a chaplain uh, until about a year and a half ago at our hospital. So I, I have a lot of uh, opportunities to to speak into my community, and, and I'm grateful that for those opportunities. But uh, the, the, the longer I've done it, the more I've been canceled out of uh, those mm -hmm. opportunities. So I, I continue to let my church know and they let their friends and other churches know you got to pay attention today and you got to get engaged. Pastor, I, you know, I, <clears throat> I'm grateful that you're running, although at the same time, I'm so concerned about the church. So I, I know you have the job of pastoring and seeing a pastor go into politics. I'm always like, oh, man, I want to have him in the church and I yeah. want him to send out somebody else to the political side. So what is it that you're seeing right now that you say, you know what, I need to be running for office as well as pastor and you've seen the dualship of what needs to be done here in these two offices. Yeah. And, and actually I, I, I hear what you're saying. The concern, uh, I've had a long dialogue with my church about my engagement in this. And so by the grace of God, I have a couple of other elders here in the church house that, that know how to handle the word of God and do. And the, the plan for us is that if I can get elected, that, uh, I'll spend, Monday through Friday uh, in Boise, my wife will travel with me to the state house uh, for those days that we're in session, January through April, and then I'll be home on weekends and I'll preach in the pulpit. Uh, I'll I'll bring the, the the Lord's word to His people, and then my brother elders will shepherd the people while I'm in Boise, and so we 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 have a. Mm. Uh, comfortableness of that of our church that we think for a short period of time. I'm not looking at this as a career. I am. I am a pastor, and that is my first and only passion, is to shepherd the people of God that I have responsibility for. Um, but I also am a pastor in a community, and um, mm -hmm. and I don't. I look around the landscape, and I have some other brothers in the city that do speak out. But by and large, a lot of things happen in my city that we're shocked at and surprised mm -hmm. by, and for that matter. That are happening throughout the state of Idaho. Yeah, why are you running? Because you're running as a constitutional candidate, um, as opposed to running as a Republican Party candidate. What made that? And I think you did that last time when you were running for House too. Yeah, so this really is a, a an intentional decision. The representation that I have around here is, uh, according to several. Uh, organizations that grade and and give scores to legislators the my my representation in the house and the senate are some of the the lower scoring of the republicans uh -huh. uh, i i have a lot of republican friends here uh, i have a lot of opportunities to speak into the republican party but uh, for the last several years i'll i'll travel to the state house to testify against a bill or for a bill and i'll come home and only to find out that my representation usually votes alongside of the Democrat Party mm. wow. rather than the Republican Party. And my Republican, uh, my, my Republican friends around here are a bit shocked that that they still run as Republicans. But, you know, again, part of my role as a pastor is to speak prophetically into my community. <laughs> and so I know that sometimes when I show up at a like, for example, at a city council meeting and I speak against uh, the the pride event that happens in my city. I know at some level, many people might think I'm speaking politically, but in all reality, I'm I'm really speaking prophetically from the Word of God right. to my community. And so I stand before them many times as a judgment from God. And so if the Lord would would so allow me to be elected into this seat, uh, I want to argue from the position of the gospel for uh, the righteousness that that the bills should be and speak against the unrighteous bills that are introduced and to speak from that position 
not as a foreteller, but as a prophetic speaking voice yeah. at the very arena where these ideas are are hammered out. Paul, in addition to some of the sexual immorality that we've already discussed and where there's a need for the church to speak prophetically, what are some of the other big ticket items on your list that you see going on in our state that you are hoping uh, to make an impact on? Yeah, you know, I'm sure you guys know this, that our adoption and foster care uh, has basically been handed over to the state. And, and we know that if this is not something that the state, that, that any government at any level is really fit by God to do. And so this is one of the things that the church ought to be doing. And quite frankly, as we attempt to do that here in our city, we have to, we have to walk through, because we've given up on this and given it to the state, we actually have to walk through a very secular system mm. that puts demands on us uh, in order to foster children or to adopt children. We have to play by the state's laws. And those are really, quite frankly, unethical and immoral. Mm. And so that's 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 a big piece for me. I think mean, everybody around here knows that we have a foster care problem in the state. Mm -hmm. And I think I think I think this is something that needs to be reformed um, for sure. I think our edu nobody. I mean, I, I don't talk to anybody that that doesn't think the education system is completely broken. Uh -huh. um, well, Brad, Brad's and, and working on that. Made, he gave made, him. He made, gave. He, Brad just gave the education system another four hundred million dollars. So it's we're we're, it, we're on the right fixed, path. We're on the right path, path, right? Sure. So so that's 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 another part of the problem is we we keep expecting the problem to fix the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Bars preach preach it. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> oh man, but so um, so though, I mean those are those are some of the big things. I certainly. Uh, argue from the sake of of state sovereignty as well. You know, we mm. we really should stand up and tell the Department of Education from the federal department. We listen. Thank you for the money you have brought us, but we don't need you to educate our children any longer. I think our state sovereignty has been lost, and uh, Idaho is too great of a state to to not be able to take care of the things that Idaho needs to take care of. Paul uh, on education. I mean. Um, independence from the National Department of Education sounds really good. Um, what what are ideas you have as far as reforming Idaho state um, education uh, system? Yeah, I think obviously it's it'll be a slow fade out because really a lot of people are used to living off of off of the uh, the federal department, and so for example, you know, a couple of examples of things that we, we have to really address and, and we can't address them until we separate ourselves or divorce ourselves from the federal department of education. And that is everything related to title nine in our schools. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every school district around me down here in Southern Idaho is dealing with the transgender issues yeah. inside of, uh, who, who gets to use what bathrooms and who gets to sleep in what bedrooms whenever they're staying overnight in, in field trips and such. And it's like every school district, and I attend these school board meetings, they're, they're actually looking for the way to keep their relationship with the Federal Department of Education while trying to appease the uprising of parents that say, no, we, mm -hmm. we don't want this. Mm -hmm. So I, I really don't think we can even start talking about how we do it until we really address, do we really want to be divorced from the Federal Department of Education? Um, but I, I think a lot of things have happened in the last decade that have been really good, and that is the rising of homeschool co-ops, the rising of, of, uh, of, of private schools. And so I think that needs to continue on. And uh, communities, I think then probably our, our local public schools, which are Idaho Constitution requires us to to provide a public school, a common right. school, right. and and so while we we make that transition, these these school districts will begin to listen uh, whenever they start seeing that they're redu Even though our 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 residency in the state of Idaho continues to explode, if if the number of students in the public school system continues to decrease, they'll have to start listening to us. Mm. Right. Paul, what's your website? Where can people go check out more about you? Yeah, thanks, guys. You can go to votepaulthompson.com and uh, you find out all this and many more things that we're arguing for down here in southern Idaho. And and then from that, it's a, it's an argument for the whole state.
Mm. Amen. VotePaulThompson.com, right? There you yeah. go. Now, don't just go to the website. You got it. Go do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, stick around for just a second here. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politics. Meet Big Ed. He has a tax-funded taste for children. Big Ed knows that the best grooming starts early. He has a plan for your preschoolers, a plan to gender confuse your grade schoolers. But if you think his grooming stops there, you have not been paying attention. Big Ed wants to liberate your daughters from old-fashioned ideas like, well, you already know. Big Ed has dorm rooms ready for you in prison buildings of learning and professors standing by dedicated to grooming young adults in doubt and unbelief. After all, he is the gatekeeper of this brave new world. And if you want a job, you'll need to pay him with years of your life for a permission slip. Yeah, whatever. You think David paid Goliath for a certificate in giant management before those two squared off? Did Luther major in theses? Was George Washington summa cum laude in empire repellents, while Jefferson focused on ag with a minor in declarations? When the world needs saving, meaningful vocations abound for those who are truly prepared. And the truth is, despite Marxist advances, this is still America, and Big Ed is still a voluntary opt-in. So don't. Not at any level. Not preschool. Not middle school. Not college. It isn't complicated. When Big Ed offers you free candy, stay away. You'll thank us later. We know it's crazy, but run with us here. Men and women were created in the image of God. You don't need a government certificate of faux learning for personal validation or permission to work. You were born with divine permission to pursue knowledge and understanding, truth, goodness, and beauty. And at New St. Andrews College, we are committed to helping students do just that to their fullest potential. In an age dominated by chaos when learning is on a choke leash controlled by Big Ed and his many strange friends, ours is an education for outlaws, an education for men and women committed to building a beautiful and free society in the ruins of the Western world. When thinking is outlawed, only outlaws will think. Yes. Big Ed hates what we do, but his hatred brings us joy. New St. Andrews College. Liberal Arts for Outlaws. Mind, Body, and Soul.